Our faith that can be as small as a mustard seed opens the door that allows God and his power to bring that healing to us. It's not something you do. And if you are praying over someone and they're healed, don't take credit for it. Only God receives the credit for all healing. God, Jehovah Rapha, can heal physically. And for some of you, that may be a stretch for your theology. And for some of you, like me, you wonder, sometimes he doesn't do it. And we wonder then, and then we doubt. i got to tell you a story. I love this story in 2 Kings, because this is going to bring it all together for us. 2 Kings chapter 20, uh, there's a story there about one of my very, 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 very favorite kings in all the Old Testament. Probably the best next to King David himself. His name is Hezekiah. Now, Hezekiah has been approached by the prophet of God and has been told, get your house in order. Hezekiah, you're going to die. This news was very devastating to Hezekiah, as it would be to any of us to get that news. And he turned his face to the wall and he began to cry out to God. And God heard his prayer before that prophet left the premises. And God said, tell you what, go back and tell Hezekiah, I've added 15 years to your life. And he went back. And Hezekiah lived 15 years longer. God healed him miraculously. God chose, Jehovah Rapha chose to heal Hezekiah at that time. And Hezekiah had cried out to God and he, God knew the life of Hezekiah and, and he healed him. Now, let me tell you something. There's two wrong positions on God and healing. One is to guarantee if your faith is strong enough, he'll heal you. That is wrong. Again, that puts the power into you and not in to Jehovah Rapha. The other wrong position is that he doesn't heal any longer today because I prayed and someone died, so he doesn't heal. You can't tell God what he can and cannot do. He is sovereign. He is sovereign. The point is this. <clears throat> and I, I tell you why I, I'm going to jump out before I hit this point why is it that our most pressing concern is for physical healing <laughs> you're like duh Tom because we don't want to die you know uh, well, wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute isn't there something more important than this world aren't we told that this world is not ours don't we all have a severe case of of being mortal? I just love it when a doctor says, you know what? Uh, you've got a, um, a disease that's going to kill you. And it's like, well, we all do. I mean, really, when you put it into perspective, okay, yeah, they're going to die a little sooner, but the fact of the matter is we're all going to die. We all, we all have a case that is not going to be cured. I don't care how much oat bran you eat, oatmeal in the morning, exercise, and you should. We should take good care of the temple that God gave us, good stewards, enjoy life, but the fact of the matter is we're all checking out one time or another. No, honestly, think about that deeply. Go a little deeper about this idea. Why is it the physical healing is the biggest part of our life? It's because I think we got our tent pegs a little too tied down to this world. Did I ever tell you I have a cure for the health care crisis today? It, it, raise your hand if you've heard my theory on how to handle our skyrocketing health care costs and insurance costs. Anybody, if you heard it? Well, it's pretty radical. It's simply this. More people just need to be willing to die. <laughs> Think about it. How it would work. You know, okay, you got this. It's going to take these kind of treatments, yada, yada. No, 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 thanks. I think I'm just going to die. It'll work. As soon as we get more and more volunteers. Uh, but... You know, it seems like people don't want to do that. They, they don't want to voluntarily just say, okay, I'm going to die. And so they fight it, and they fight it, and they fight it, and they fight it. But you know, the fact of the matter is that that is a choice. Whether or not we go on for more and more health care. I love the, I, please, Lord, forgive me for watching Scrubs, but I, I, I have watched it from time to time. And I love this one scene where um, the, the cute little intern doctor came in and told this lady, says, you're going to die, you have to do this treatment. If you don't do this treatment, you're going to die. And, and uh, so we start treatments on this day, such and such. And, and she said, no, 
not going to do it. Well, no, no, you don't understand. You have to do it. Um, and you've got to start tomorrow, and we're going to start. Here it is. You have to do it. She goes, uh, well, no, I don't. I don't have to do it. Well, yeah, you do. And he said, Sonny, just stop. This is my choice. And I, well, what a radical choice. She didn't want to go through all that stuff. She decided, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm healed already. Huh, does that sound kind of contradictory? That you can be healed and still have physical ailment? Folks, we all got a physical ailment. Healing is more than being having no problems. Healing is more than having no problems in our life, whether physical, emotional, or whatever. All physical healing is temporary. You look at Hezekiah, what a wonderful thing, and God did it for his purposes. Hezekiah cried out. God gave him 15 more years. He still died. Lazarus, what a great, great story that is. He'd been in the tomb for four days, and I love the King James Version. It said, he stinketh. <laughs> he did. Four days in that hot Jerusalem tomb, man. He stunk. And uh, Jesus raised him from the dead. Here's the, here's the thing, though. He died later on. Are you getting the point? Uh, all physical healing is temporary because we all have a, a, a total case of mortality. God has his purposes in healing physically. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 16. I got that up there. 2 Corinthians 4. Now I got to read it off here if I have memorized. Uh, but all, all physical healing is temporary. I guess I didn't pay my bill or something. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Oh, yeah, this is a wonderful passage here. Uh, because it, it talks about, uh, you know, the relationship between this old body wearing out. And, uh, and in verse 16, it says, Therefore we don't lose heart, though outwardly we're wasting away, yet inwardly we're being renewed day by day. And I mean, that's just amazing. I, it's, it's so funny. To me, it's just hilarious. I, I was in the supermarket one day, and I saw this lady, and she was about 80-some years old, and she had jet black hair and was wearing a miniskirt. <laughs> oh, my goodness. you got to be kidding. What's wrong here, you know? I mean, but that was a sermon. It was a walking sermon. You know, because I'm telling you, I don't care how much paint you put on the hair and, you know, how much Botox you squeeze in. <laughs> And you wear the hip clothes. I mean, the outwards, it's coming down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, well, that was a bad choice of words. But um, <laughs> I'm telling you, it is. And I don't mind it. I make fun with Bobby. Bobby makes fun with me because I, it doesn't bother me. It's happening. I, it's happening. The outwards, it's, it's wasting away. It's falling apart. And, and yet inwardly, I feel more renewed than I've ever been in my life. You see, there's healing that takes place inside that only Jehovah Rapha can bring. Don't focus so much on the physical. If God wants to work a miracle in the physical, praise God, he can do it. If he chooses not to, then he's not going to no matter how much you try to twist his arm. And it's not because he doesn't love you. <laughs> 